We are going to take you to Haiti, the voodoo island, in search of pirate treasure. Treasure that's been lost for over 300 years. I'm Bill Burrard. The program is Treasure, and our story is an intriguing tale of a pirate's haunt, Tortuga. Now, Tortuga lies off the north coast of the voodoo island of Haiti, right out here in the Caribbean. Now, when the pirates and the buccaneers roamed the Spanish main, the island of Tortuga became known as the gathering place for the wolves of the sea. As a matter of fact, as far back as the year 1630, the name Tortuga never failed to strike fear in the heart of merchant seamen because the buccaneers who used this island as their home were a ruthless lot and they preyed on the great merchant vessels that plied the trade routes between Central America and Spain. Now, we're going to take you to the island of Tortuga in search of pirate treasure and we're going to find some. And to help us do it is none other than Commander Ian Murray, one of the really great experts on pirates in the whole world. You know, Commander, uh, you, it seemed to me, 21 years ago, had been in the island of Tortuga. What was your personal reason then for wanting to return for this film? Well, Bill, at that particular time, I had spent some 10 months in the Caribbean by myself on a 32-foot sloop, just going the backwaters and looking for pirate material. So I was determined to go back. Only this time, we had the uh, added use, of course, of aircraft and small boats. Where did you start your journey, Commander? We commenced our journey in the old French city of Port de Pay on the north coast of Haiti. Our first stop on the Voodoo Island Bill was the old capital city of uh, Port au Prince. Here it was very necessary, of course, after such an extended absence, that we sort of renew acquaintances and make some certain inquiries relative to our projected treasure trip north. And meeting old friends was really a thrill in many ways. This is the governor's palace of the uh, present state of Haiti, the present republic. Of course, Bill has a very peculiar background because on this particular island, there are two republics the Negro Republic of Haiti and the Republic of uh, the, the, the Dominican Republic, which of course is controlled by the uh, descendants of the Spaniards. Your mind was on the treasure sands of Tortuga and there was a delay in getting there, wasn't there, Commander? Well, it was necessary, of course, to wait for transportation north by air because uh, Port de Pay is rather a difficult spot with which to, uh, to reach, by the way. and refresh your uh, thirst. Yes, and this was not very pleasant, Bill, because we wanted to get on with the job. But of course, looking around Port-au-Prince, we visited the waterfront, where these native boats have come in day after day, year in, year out. Do you find any buccaneer coins on these sands? Not on these sands, Bill. But some of these tradesmen and these uh, small boat owners that come from Tortuga, at odd times, do offer pirate coins for barter. One of the interesting points about this modern city, of course, of uh, Port-au-Prince is the fact that every afternoon, the fishing fleet comes in. That seems to be a joyous moment, to say the least, Commander. Well, it's a sort of get-together for some of the inhabitants. They go down there every day to get their particular fresh fish. And these waters abound in fish, and of course, it's one of the main staple food diets of the island.
Bill, this was a great moment because here we were in the city of Cape Haitian on the north coast, only just a few miles away from our goal on Tortuga. Must have been a thrill for you, Commander, to return after 21 years. This was an added thrill because this gentleman, Mr. Beck, the keeper of the hotel, we hadn't seen each other in all the years past. And of course, we had a grand reunion. Now, what part does uh, Cape High 10 play in uh, the buccaneer or pirate story? Well, it was a very important city in the days of the buccaneers, and of course, later, became the capital city of the uh, Negro King, Henry Christoph, who did much, of course, to improve it. The older part of the city, of course, was open to raids from the buccaneers, and they had to find some means of defense. So in the mid-half of the 17th century, these ramparts were built along the sea coast. Were these to protect the city from buccaneers? Yes, because these fellows would raid anything and everything whenever they got the chance. And of course, a treasure seeker always looks around in odd walls and odd places for items of interest. And here, we actually found one that was rather outstanding. This piece of natural lime, sea lime. Of course, you see, they had the materials close at hand. So it aided in the building of these particular fortifications. This happened to be a Sunday morning bill. It was quite quiet. And this building is well worthy of uh, bringing to the screen because it was formerly the residence of one of the governors, built in the mid-half of the 17th century and in a perfect state of preservation. Commander, 21 years is a long time. Did you find much change in Cape I-10? Bill, I think that every rock, every stone, every building was exactly the same as it had been 20 years ago. Hmm. Even the people, still shy and reticent, except perhaps for these small boys, all dressed up for church, This was a point, Bill, which uh, also gives one a thrill if you visit it and you know the story of the buccaneers, because it was a meeting ground, a carousing ground for these gentlemen of the sea. It bore the title, Les Oiseaux de Mer, or the Birds of the Sea. And here, night after night, they caroused and of course spent their ill-gotten gold. This pavement has a very interesting story. Along with this monument, it commemorates the first freshwater well established in the north of Haiti sometime about the year 1665. Well, Commander, I know you were very anxious to get on to Tortuga, but uh, you had to get transportation and so on. Could you tell us a bit about the customs of the people of the Voodoo Island of Haiti? Well, Bill, basically, they're very superstitious and a very they don't trust one too much. But, of course, like all peoples everywhere, they have their natural sports. And this is one which has been handed down from the days of the buccaneers, cockfighting. I've always heard it was a rather bloody sport. Well, in this particular area, Bill, it is not, because the birds have only the, the weapons with which nature has endowed them. They don't use the steel spur. And it's a case of a fight to a finish when one of the unfortunate runs away. There's really no blood shed. Commander, you mentioned that the people of the Voodoo Island were superstitious. Don't they have some strange things like uh, voodoo dances? Huh? They do, Bill. And later on, you're going to see a real one. Commander, looks like you're urging your choice on. Well, like all Scotsmen, I picked the wrong one and lost. Do they uh, wager a bit uh, on the outcome of these events? That's a peculiar thing. These boys will work their hearts out all the week for just a few dollars, and on Sunday, they'll gamble it all on a single uh, fight between two cops. You know, the treasure sands of Tortuga calling you back after this length of time seem to be getting closer and closer. I know that you feel that they are, aren't they, Commander? Well, Bill, this particular little walk a very strenuous one, incidentally, for both Mr. McCabe and myself. We thought that it would be very interesting because it ties in so much with the story of Buccaneer treasure. We were visiting a fort just some distance outside Cape Haitian. And this fort, like numbers of others along the north coast of Haiti, played a very, very important role in the defense of the possessions against the inroads of the Buccaneers. <laughs> 